It needs it. Hello, everyone. I have been feverishly working at catching up. So that means all the passenger side things like the seat pan, the seat mounts, all those things I've got finished. So let me show you inside. Garage time. I'm pretty happy with how this rear seat area came out. One of you guys mentioned in the comments, it looks like a uh, air scoop or some kind of fan duct, which is kind of true. Uh, but this is here to clearance the trailing arms and also the higher camper pivots here. So this is more adjustability in the suspension, allows me to get the ride height lower without crazy camber on the tires. These are the gusset plates that are welded to the sill and also welded to the tunnel. And there's a bar that spans the width of these two plates. There's one of the bars there underneath all the tools. And this goes across as required by FIA rules to keep the seat very secure, very strong. There's nut plates welded on the back. I did drill some holes in the tunnel here for those nuts to protrude through, but everything's flush on the inside and then those bars are removable. So this is gonna allow me to get the seats as low as possible for the low profile Sparco seats. So I'm pretty excited about how all that came out. Now the question is today, what are we gonna do that's new? So I'm gonna clean up all this mess and really reveal what's bothering me the most. There's a bunch of dents here in the floor pan and I need to take care of that before I can paint it. This is what the passenger side seat mounts look like. These are according to the FIA spec. If you remember, I did the driver's side at least one of you was interested in me offering this as a kit. I'm not sure how much it would cost. I would outsource these parts to be laser cut, so it would look a little bit nicer than these. And I'd probably do some of the welding you know, here in my shop. But my guess is it would probably be about 200 bucks. So contact me if you're interested. I would need to move at least five of these kits. It's amazing how much stuff you'll find in these tunnels old screws and undercoating and grease and just grime from all the years of just neglect. Okay, now we can see on the interior again. So much better. Here's those mounts I installed earlier today. That's for the seats. This corner area, this whole inner sill, longitudinal area, all this structural stuff, this has been repaired. Um, I told you this car had been in an accident and this was crunched as well as the inner firewall there and some of the floors here were crunched as well. So I don't know if you can look up real close. There's a couple drips from the epoxy primer, but there is some welding down there and this has been straightened out to some degree, at least to get the structural stuff done. But what is left to do is straighten out the rest of the floor pan because it's pretty bad. I don't know if you can see here, but this is completely dented. This is probably an inch or two up from where it should be. The floor is just bulging here from the bottom. This rail here is a little bit twisted. I don't know if because of the accident it went off road and, and this got damaged or if it fell off a lift or somehow they jacked it up right here, but this is completely tweaked. It's straighter in this section right here because I had already worked on this section. And this section here is not straight. It's, it's actually depressed down by the passenger's feet. That rail there is not straight. There's a huge dent right here. I don't know how it gets dented going down, but that's, uh, that's very odd. It looks like a couple marks right there, like 
there's dents from the inside. This is kind of wrinkled up right there. Some major uh, dents here. There's another dent here from the inside. You know, this car was left abandoned and it looked like, you know, maybe people were throwing stuff in it. Maybe people were stepping in it, jumping on it. Some big dents there from the bottom. Also in this tunnel access, you can see the floor below it is completely crunched in. Okay, now I'm here under the car and you can see this is the tunnel area that is completely caved in. It should be sort of, you know, this shape. And you can see some big hits here on the end and then a long line going right down the middle where it must have scraped on something. This is completely caved in. Here's a view of kind of the, the dent from the inside. So this needs to get pushed up. This pan area is just not flat. This crease goes all the way back to just about where those seat areas are. You can see here, this is where the undercoating was burned from welding in those uh, seat mounts. So these are the front seats. The tunnel's caved in. It's not so bad towards the front of the car. The tunnel looks good here on the front, but uh, there's a big depression up here by the driver's feet. Here's another view of the tunnel area. Here's what the driver's side dent looks like. So I want to get those floor pans at least better than they are now. Um, probably not going to run carpet in this car, so I want it to look good when it's painted. So I'm going to, going to you know, hammer it out the best I can. So I've, I've laid out a couple tools here, um, some big hammers. This is the, the, the small sledgehammer. This one here is rubber. It's pretty, pretty beat up pretty heavy duty ball peen hammer, um, some various blocks of wood. Uh, anybody know what this is? It's for exercise. This is a, um, just a heavy bag of lead shot. This is, uh, yeah, 25 pounds. I got a football, probably wondering what I'm gonna do with that. I don't even know if this is gonna work, but I got that, the Jaws, uh, the Jaws of Life, and a jack from an old Honda. This uh, I use a lot actually. And then this is just a traditional bottle jack. Okay, I just finished this little quadrant right here and there's going to be some hammer marks in it when it's painted. I'm not going to do filler or anything on this. I'm just trying to get it as straight as possible and as flat as possible. So my message is, don't be afraid to smack your Porsche around a little bit. It needs it.
Okay, I've finished my way all the way up to this center kind of bulkhead piece. So from here, all the way back is uh, as good as I'm gonna get it. I think it looks pretty straight. I don't wanna do a complete respray here of the uh, bottom half. So I'm not stripping the undercoating just to make the dents perfect. I, I'd rather just touch up the undercoating in the spots that need it. You know, here's a big spot here where I welded the seats on. So this is gonna need some help. Um, that's what I'm gonna look into right now. Okay, I've been able to move this section down a lot. Unfortunately, I just dislodged a bunch of more dirt and rust, so I need to vacuum this out so I can kind of see you know, what areas are high and low still. But I'm gonna go underneath and just take a gander and see how it looks from the bottom. I don't wanna overstretch it from the bottom. Okay, here's a view after the first pass, and this is definitely much better but there's still some uh, major hammering to do on this passenger side and a little bit more to do on the driver's side. So I'm just trying to you know, sneak up on it, not try to overstretch it, just try to get this, uh, this does you know, dip down right here. So I wanna make sure you get the right curvature back into it without overdoing it. And then right here, this is the area that's still really depressed. And I'm gonna have to get this area out before I can really fine tune this one. It's just the way dents work. Okay, so this conduit right here is rigid. This is solid, and that, I don't want to crush that one. I don't know if it's for the throttle linkage or I can't remember what that one's for, but uh, that one's definitely in my way. So I have to, you know, build something to go around it. So when I push on it, I'm not pushing on the tubing, I'm pushing on the floor. If there was ever an exercise for working on cars, that would be it. I've gotten up and down off the floor and in and out of this car a million times today. That is called the Turkish get up. Okay, the next step is to modify this hammer bar a little bit. So I got as much as I can get done with that opening claw inside the tunnel. And now I just need to create like a little, a little shelf on the bottom so I can slide this inside the tunnel and then hammer from the top. So it has to make it like a C on the bottoms. I am getting closer, you guys. Uh, next week, I hope to be able to spray some paint on the interior. Thank you guys again for watching. Merchandise, Garage Time shirts, available at agaragetime.com. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and enjoy your week. Take care.